For most animals, the bond between a mother and baby is strong. It's a crucial component of growing up. In this age of discovery, it is for some babies the only emotional bond they will ever experience with another animal. For others, this relationship extends beyond the maternal parent to an entire extended family. For these wild babies, this added support not only gives them the freedom of independence, it also provides them the comfort and security that comes with these close family relationships. Banded mongooses are social animals, and like lions, the young are suckled communally. Grooming is also done by all, and a selected female will stay with the young to suckle and groom, giving the other females a chance to forage. For a mongoose, grooming is a very important part of the daily social activity. Not only does it imprint the pack on each member, it is also vital for hygiene, and living in such close quarters makes this the whole pack's responsibility. Grooming is enjoyed with enthusiasm by all. It also feels good. There was always a sentry looking out for the clan, and now he has sensed an intruder. He quickly locates the danger, and by means of chirping, alerts the rest of the pack. A Mozambican spitting cobra is looking for an easy meal. The little mongooses are naturally curious, but what they don't know is that this snake has a secret weapon. <laughs> it can spit its venom over a meter, which makes him very dangerous. <laughs> While most head for cover, this kitten is inquisitive. And despite mum's warning, He goes for a closer look. The cobra spits. And sends a deadly concoction into the little mongoose's eye. The effect is instantaneous. The mongoose is blinded. His mother quickly rushes to his aid. The adult mongoose vigorously licks the youngster. Trying to remove the poison. Finally, the kitten can get up. But he is weak and doesn't get far. Again, his mother comes to his aid. and moves him towards the pack and safety. Although blind in one eye, he has a fighting chance of survival. Especially with a close-knit pack who will make sure that he is protected and taken care of. The clan structure means that all members have their functions within the group, and although this baby will never progress to being a sentry or hunter, he will be given his own area of responsibility. But for now, he will continue being a wild baby, 
and enjoy the many benefits that the adults bestow upon him. Baby baboons are also reliant on the adults, and even while asleep, an infant, its mouth clamped on the nipple for extra grip, is quite adept at holding on to the underside of mum's belly. But as they get older, they adapt to riding jockey style on top of the adult's back. Not only is the view better, it is far more comfortable. Playing is one of the most important pastimes these youngsters will do. For a young baboon, the days are filled with new challenges and encounters. A simple task like picking up a twig or trying it for taste is important not only to refine hand-eye coordination, but to lodge valuable information in the baby's developing brain. This is the age of discovery. And risk. And when at first you do not succeed, try again. And taste again. For at this age, it's natural to put everything in the mouth. And nothing's off limits. A baboon's skill and mobility above the ground is key to its survival, and they learn these vital skills early in life. No sooner has a little baboon learned to walk, and he's already trying his hand at climbing. But he needs a little practice before he can move up a level. Trees are there to be conquered. And with a little help from mom, he makes a head start. There's always an older cousin for inspiration and pointers on what not to do. Climbing aside, when everything's moving at once, it's safer to stick to mum. Development in a baboon troop is all about imitation. And the babies learn from the older ones. Mix the two age groups, and the game could get rough. Mom intervenes. It's nap time. Baboon youngsters like to interact and play. This natural impulse develops skills and fine motor coordination. It's also vital in developing relationships and alliances that will form the core of future baboon society.
Like the baboons, this herd of elephants also rely on group relationships and alliances for their development and survival. But even together, they are powerless against the effects of a serious drought. The usual areas, once soaked, are now dry. And these elephants, normally skilled in the art of finding water, are desperate. To survive, the herd must keep moving, searching for this life-giving substance. This mother refuses to go any further, despite the persistence of her thirsty two-year-old. Her other calf, a newborn, is dead. She refuses to accept it and stays close, waiting for him to get up. The rest of the herd moves on. They're driven by thirst, as well as the ever-present lions waiting for the weakened or dead. The little calf will not rise, despite the mother's urging. She is torn between staying with one calf and saving the other by taking it to water. Her distress and the midday heat cause conflict. They are content to wait. She will not let them near. Her other calf is confused, unsure why her mother won't move on. She wants to take both calves with her. He's not going anywhere. The rest of the herd has moved on eager to find water. Still, she stands guard, daring anything to get close. The surviving calf is getting desperate, but her mother just won't listen to her pleas. Even the lion's patience is running out. They try some persuasion. But in her present state of mind, they can tell she's not to be messed with. She knows if her older calf is to survive, she must join the rest of the herd and find water. She just can't bring herself to leave. The herd has finally reached a water hole. The babies are delighted. Elephants can last up to three days without water, but with newly weaned young, they must find water a lot more regularly. 
The other calf is now at great risk from becoming another victim of the unrelenting drought. The mother knows the danger and once again tries to wake her still calf. Finally, she seems to understand. He's not going anywhere. And reluctantly, they leave. Finally, the mother and calf reach the rest of the herd and water. Sometimes the close family ties that protect the young are also the very emotions that often put them at the greatest risk. These cheetah cubs don't have the luxury of a large extended family to help look after them. At just six weeks, they depend on their mother for all their needs. For the first four weeks, they stayed deep under cover where they were born, but now they are old enough to follow and travel with their mum. Mom needs to keep an eye on them, for at this age, they are naturally adventurous and like all youngsters, tend to wander away. The outside world is new and full of extraordinary things for cheetah cubs, and they must quickly become acquainted with their new surroundings no matter how large or daunting it may be. It's mother's job to teach them. A volunteer. And lesson number one begins. Hunting is not just about speed. It's also about strategy. A lesson worth remembering. The cubs follow mum, using the white tip of her tail as a beacon. Accompanied by a unique call they recognize as hers. The white fluff on their backs is not just a sign of their young age. It's also specially designed to camouflage them in the long grass when they are at their most vulnerable. They catch up to the follow me beacon. All except for him. He's lagging behind. And the rest aren't waiting. Good time to show off some real cheetah skills. And while on the subject of hard-working parents, here's a dad that has a large family. He's a ground hornbill and shares his home with only his closest relations. His eldest, now almost two years old, has not yet inherited dad's bright red markings. Mom, with her blue throat pouch, also lives at home. Although not a chick anymore, their youngster stays close, where both parents continue to spoil him. Dad's got other things on his mind. 
He's collecting nesting material. Mum's found a worm. The nesting material and little worm have a purpose. Because in their treetop nest is the latest addition to their family. And hornbills take parenting very seriously. The male ground hornbill does more than his share of chores around the home. <laughs> While mum feeds the chick, there's always room for fresh nest matter. Then he's off. He needs to make sure the rest of the family is happy. The youngster's hungry, and Dad needs to find him some grub. Ground hornbills don't mind sharing their home turf with another big horned animal. Because where there are rhino, there are sure to be rhino dung. And where there is dung, there are sure to be juicy snacks. The juvenile has finally cracked catching something by himself and displays it for all to see. The other youngster has no luck and looks to the adults for help. Dad has caught a hornbill delicacy, a frog, and the whole family assembles to see who gets to eat the prize. The unsuccessful hornbill is hungry and begs. But Dad gives it to Mum, who will dish out the spoils. The hungry youngster wins the lotto and proudly shows off her loot. He has his worm and is not concerned about a silly little frog. And now that the family have been taken care of, the adults look after themselves. Early morning and a family of baboons enjoy the warmth which the first rays of sun deliver on this cold winter day. The youngsters cling tightly to the warm fur of an adult, while the sentry on duty takes up his post nearby. Within the extended family of a baboon troop, there is no shortage of playmates and always a willing contender for a bit of king of the castle. For a troop of baboons, families are more than just playmates on demand and endless social distractions. It's about integrated society where monkeys rely on and compete with each other every day. There is a never-ending supply of relatives who will gladly cuddle and look after the babies. 
Sometimes a baboon mother can be a bit selfish and not want to share. An older baby is feeling a little left out. He wants in on a hug and a cuddle and goes looking for a little attention. An auntie is the perfect target. But she's busy with her own baby. He shows off his newly learned social skill of offering his rear to the baby, who does not grasp the significance of this act. A tug on the ears does not dislodge the baby from his mother's grasp. but does prompt retaliation. A reassuring head rub says it's all right. The young baboon is keen to meet and interact with the rest of the family. And all the cousin wants is a bit of affection from his aunt. But she's not interested and lets him know. Eventually she softens. He is an orphan, and in baboon society, this makes him the responsibility of the whole troop. Now he's trying to bond with the baby. Mom's having none of it. But the orphaned cousin is persistent. All he wants is quality bonding time. And a family he can call his own. which is exactly what this big male lion has. A run of many healthy litters, each having progressed from vigorous cubs to strong adolescents. The big male descends from a succession of genetically pure lions. And each new litter has proven this strong lineage. He has chosen his mates well. The subsequent offspring have proven this. That is, until his latest brood appeared. One did not quite match the others, although it behaved and acted just like all the rest. It's through no fault of his that his cubs are born both tan and white. According to ancient legend, white lions have always inhabited southern Africa. But it was not until 1975 that actual sightings confirmed the existence of this mysterious cat. Apart from their obvious color difference, white lions are just like their tawny brothers. Their eye color is normally yellowish brown, like normal lions, but some do have a slight bluish tinge to them. White lions are not albino, and legend has it that these lions are symbolic of all the good found in all creatures. Where the tawny male has a mane that is darker than the rest of his body, the mane of a male white lion is almost lighter than the rest of his coat. It's not at all common to find a family of white lions. Normally, this genetic confusion only affects one or two in a litter. Another genetic oddity is the fact that little warthogs have the unfortunate reputation of being considered a delicacy to most meat-eating mammals.
so it's vital that they always keep a sharp lookout. A pack of wild dogs is a threat to baby warthogs and should be taken seriously. A hyena is not above snacking on a little porker either. For these little guys are the tastiest babies around. They do not know the extent of their popularity, but have mum and dad to look out for them. The pack of dogs moves in towards the unsuspecting warthogs. But Mother Pig is sharp and spots them. And all hogs with tusks are called to arms. Just when the dogs think the hogs are running scared. The tables are turned, and the dogs learn there must be easier prey elsewhere. Here's a more serious threat. The warthogs will have to be very careful to escape this formidable hunter. Unlike wild dogs, the leopard uses greater cunning and strategy to bring home the bacon. It also has speed on its side. And in no time, the leopard has plucked a piglet from the ground at full speed. For one little warthog, it's all over. But for the leopard, it's not. There's competition for his catch. For the hyena is loath to attempt to catch even little pigs for himself. He prefers to steal from another. Catching is one thing. Keeping it is quite another. But as the hyena and wild dogs have discovered, A piglet in the paw is worth two in the bush. In nature, it's necessary for there to be a sacrifice. And for every baby that is sacrificed, there are those that will benefit and grow stronger. The African wildcat kittens were born hidden in a den, and after three weeks under cover, finally come out. <coughs> Up till now, they've had mom to look after their every need. Now they are eight weeks old, and spend the endless days frolicking in the felt. Kittens are playful by nature, and at this age, life is just one big game. But this is a game in which these cats will have to become master players. 
in just another six to eight weeks, they will have to fend for themselves. African wildcats are solitary animals, and once weaned, they will establish territories of their own. In all likelihood, they will never come into contact with their mother or each other again. Playing is not only fun, it's also essential for learning the basics they will need to survive. But now for the most important game of all. Cat and mouse. Now all they need is an obliging mouse. Let the games begin. That was easy. Stunned by quick success, the kitten is unsure what to do next. But the mouse is not ready to give up yet. Nor is he that willing to play cat and mouse with the kittens. But there's no escaping these eager cats. For now, the little cat's appetite for fun is stronger than his hunger. His sister wants to join in, and while she distracts him, the mouse sneaks away. For him, this game can only have one ending. She wants to join in. It's his mouse, and he's not sharing it with anyone. Take your eye off the ball, and you could lose the game. The chase is half the fun. Unless you're a mouse. The kitten is getting tired of this game. It's time to progress to the next level. She's feeling left out. They are just hanging out. Now she's found a playmate of her own. It's a poisonous baboon spider, and it fights back. And, while he's momentarily distracted with the antics of his sister and the baboon spider, which is proving to be more than a mouthful. In the spirit of Jerry, the little mouse makes his getaway. Game over for the kitten. With all those legs, she just can't get a grip. Finally, she bites a morsel. But not without a price. The dangerous baboon spider injected toxic poison into the kitten's face. It'll take months to recover. And the game is not such fun anymore. 
Her brother just can't believe his mouse has gone. And for both kittens, it's back to the drawing board. The same drawing board these cubs have been hard at work on. They are now six months old, and having lost their baby fur, are now better equipped to hunt for themselves. Mother is still around to show them the ropes. They have still not killed successfully, and their mother is keen to pass on her skills. Impala are always good fare for hungry cheetahs. They know this and are always alert. Using the high grass as cover, the young cats sneak closer towards the buck. But their enthusiasm is no substitute for skill. And the impala know that something is up. Mum decides to lay low and watch. They are also content to wait. The impala should forget they are there and relax. The grass is long, so he decides that a bit of height will improve the view. A lesson this cub has not learned is that cheetahs aren't the best tree climbers. Their unsheathed blunt claws are better designed for grip on the ground than into bark. His sister decides to join him. But he's not so comfortable high up in the tree. Despite the view. She's found out that trees are not a cheetah's natural home. The cubs decide it's time to get back to this hunting thing. And while one attacks from the side, the rest approach head on. It's the famous pincer movement. Mom observes proudly, but the movement fails. The impala are gone. Mom's not that upset, because the cubs aren't ready to leave home quite yet. This female African jacana is out foraging while her partner is tucked up at home. In fact, what he has tucked up are their chicks. The African jacana is more commonly known as the lily trotter an appropriate name for the way it walks across the pond leaves, as if they're stepping stones. Rocks would be a safer footing. What makes these lily trotters distinctive is that the male takes an equal share in looking after the chicks. And at the first sign of danger, he's quick to jump to the rescue. As his little chicks scamper around pecking at tasty morsels, he is vigilantly looking out for danger.
tries his best to keep a tight rein on his flock, but it isn't easy. And his mate is enjoying the time out. While this might look like danger, hippos are actually an African Jicana's best friend. Rustling up all the unseen insects as it munches on the hyacinth. Mom watches from a distance as the rest of her family enjoy the feast. The gnashing jaws serve up a wealth of Chicana snacks. But best not to get too close to those large teeth. The hippo is not known for his excellent vision and couldn't care less if a Chicana chick got in the way. This is a little close for comfort. Which prompts Dad to call an end to the feast. Mom agrees. Motivated by a cold wind coming off the river. And using his specially adapted Jacona down duvet. Dad tucks the chicks in for the night. The baboons are enjoying the warmth that comes with the morning sun. The young baby's mother looks for a spot where he can play safely. All the adults get a kick out of playing with the babies. especially Dad, who also wants time with his baby. The orphaned cousin is still trying to get involved with the family fun, but gets a tongue lashing from another family member, who can't seem to control it. He feels left out and tries to get the baby away, but not under mum's watch. Even older babies need a bit of love. So a quick check on the baby. And the orphan gets his cuddle. And while baby touches up on balance, the orphan finally gets some real family affection, baboon style. Not all animals are lucky enough to have a family or adult to look after them, teach them the ways of the wild, and protect them from danger. Only a few have a mum to protect them, or a sibling to discover new games. 
But for those lucky enough to have the guidance of a closely knit family, it is a union that will shape characters and prepare them for the challenges of the future.